five minute medicine series on diarrhea. Diarrhea can be defined by increased stool frequency or total weight of stool. Normal is considered anything from one bowel movement per three days to three bowel movements per day. Greater than three bowel movements in one day is often considered diarrhea, but you need to consider the patient's normal bowel habit and if there is significant change from their baseline. There are also definitions based on total fecal daily weight, but these are impractical for clinical purposes. The patient has acute diarrhea if symptoms are present for less than two weeks, and chronic diarrhea is considered anything for longer than four weeks. The differential for acute diarrhea has two main etiologies. 90% are due to infection. Viral gastroenteritis is most common, but bacterial etiologies are possible, especially in returning travelers. 9% are due to medication side effects. Common offenders include antibiotics, laxative, coltacine, metformin, and NSAIDs. Less than 1% of the time, other etiologies are responsible for an acute episode of diarrhea. The four main causes of chronic diarrhea include osmotic, secretory, inflammatory, and abnormal motility. Osmotic diarrhea is caused by non-absorbed substances in the lumen which increase water retention in bowel. This type of diarrhea resolves with fasting. This can be sorted into three main groups. The first is substances that cannot be absorbed, such as excessive sorbitol, sometimes seen in sugar-free products, or magnesium-containing laxatives. The second is conditions of malabsorption, such as lactase deficiency, celiac disease, pancreatic insufficiency, and bile salt malabsorption due to ileal resection or bacterial overgrowth. Alternatively, failure to secrete bile salts to the gut lumen may also result in fat malabsorption, which may occur in people with cirrhotic livers or bile duct obstruction. Stool analysis reveals a stool pH of less than 6, an osmotic gap greater than 120. The calculation for osmotic gap is discussed later. Fecal fat testing, although somewhat impractical, can indicate malabsorption as a culprit with values in excess of 14 grams of fat per 24-hour stool collection. Secretory diarrhea is characterized by watery large volume fecal outputs that are typically painless and persist with fasting. It occurs due to chloride secretion, which water follows, and is usually due to infectious causes. Viral gastroenteritis is most common, but bacterial causes such as C. difficile can also cause secretory diarrhea. Rare causes include neuroendocrine tumors. Stool analysis reveals a stool pH greater than 6 and osmotic gap less than 50. 24-hour fecal fat analysis does not reveal elevated fecal fat levels. Inflammatory causes of diarrhea may lead to blood or pus in the stool. The commonest causes include inflammatory bowel disease, radiation, and invasive infections like Shigella, Salmonella, and E. coli or 157H7. Abnormal motility is the last class of chronic diarrhea. These are difficult to diagnose, and other causes of diarrhea may need to be ruled out before one of these can be diagnosed. Causes include irritable bowel syndrome, hyperthyroidism, neurologic disease like diabetic gastroparesis, scleroderma, or surgical-related syndromes like short gut syndrome or dumping syndrome. These etiologies cause diarrhea because of high motility and low absorption time. On the history, determine whether the diarrhea is acute or chronic. This helps determine the approach to take on the history. For acute diarrhea, recent food and environmental exposures should be inquired about, including undercooked poultry and eggs, hamburgers, seafood, and canned foods. You can ask about recent foreign water consumption as well if concerned about hepatitis A. Recent antibiotic use or hospital exposure raises concern for C. difficile. For the chronic diarrhea patient, get a good history around when the patient is having symptoms. Nocturnal diarrhea is often seen in inflammatory cases. Look for dietary precipitants like milk or gluten-based products. Relief with fasting suggests an osmotic cause. Characterizing the stool itself is also helpful. Bulky, greasy stools that are difficult to flush or float in the toilet suggest fat malabsorption. Watery stools suggest a secretory cause. Bloody stools suggest inflammation. Other symptoms to ask about include abdominal pain, which may be present with infection or inflammation, recent travel, medication history, surgical history including any bowel resections, family history specifically of IBD or celiac disease, alcohol abuse which may suggest chronic pancreatitis or cirrhosis, and constitutional symptoms like fever and weight loss which may be present in IBD. On the physical exam, check the vitals. Tachycardia and hypotension can indicate severe volume depletion or sepsis. A high respiratory rate or fever would support a diagnosis of sepsis due to infectious diarrhea. Check the patient's hydration status. On the general physical exam, feel for thyroid mass. On abdominal exam, inspect for surgical scars. Feel for any mass that may suggest adherent loops of bowel and tenderness. Rectal exam should look for blood and presence of a perianal fistula which may suggest inflammatory disease. Dermatologic exam may reveal evidence of associated skin conditions like dermatitis hepatiformis in celiac disease or erythema nodosum and pyoderma gangrenosum in IBD. 
Patients with diarrhea often need fluids and electrolyte replacement. For a patient with acute diarrhea, if they are clinically well, no investigations are necessary. Managing with supportive therapy is reasonable. If the patient has risk factors for a bacterial cause, such as high fever, major dehydration, bloody stool, overseas travel, or recent antibiotic use, or if they are immunocompromised and an infection could have devastating consequences, then stool send the stool for analysis, including electron microscopy, CNS, ova and parasites, and also send for a C. difficile if there is recent antibiotic use or a stay in hospital. In a patient with acute traveler's diarrhea, empiric antibiotics are reasonable, and if they have prolonged symptoms, also send the stool workup to determine the specific pathogen. For patients with chronic diarrhea, you can differentiate between osmotic or secretory by checking if the diarrhea resolves with fasting, as osmotic generally does. Alternatively, you can also note their response to a clear liquid diet without malabsorbed carbohydrates and see if it resolves. The second step is to obtain stool workup, including calculating the osmotic gap, which is calculated by taking measured stool osmolality and subtracting the calculated osmolality from it. A difference greater than 120 per uh, suggests osmotic cause because there are other substances like lactose in the stool that are not being accounted for in the calculated osmolality. If an osmotic cause seems likely, you can look for malabsorption syndromes. Workup may include an anti-TTG antibody for celiac disease, lactose challenge or hydrogen breath test for lactase deficiency, and amylase and lipase to assess for pancreatic insufficiency. Low B12 levels with megaloblastic anemia is often seen in bacterial overgrowth, and um, although jejunal aspirates and glucose breath tests are the best way to diagnose this, these may be impractical and response to a trial of antibiotics may be diagnostic. A fecal fat study, as discussed earlier, can diagnose a primary problem due to malabsorption. If a secretary cause of diarrhea is likely, send the stool for C. difficile. If this is negative, it's still most likely due to another infectious cause, but you may want to rule out rare neuroendocrine causes if it persists. The presence of fecal leukocytes suggests an inflammatory process. Colonoscopy with biopsy should be performed to diagnose inflammatory processes. A TSH and gastric motility test can be ordered if you suspect abnormal motility is causing the patient's symptoms. If still unclear about the cause, consider upper endoscopy and colonoscopy, which can help diagnose numerous conditions including IBD, microscopic colitis, radiation colitis, celiac disease, and so on. When all tests fail, consider a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome. Patients with acute diarrhea can become unstable. P diarrhea can lead to significant dehydration, which may cause hypotension, lactic acidosis, significant electrolyte depletion, or an altered level of consciousness. Someone with significant bright red blood per rectum may also become unstable due to blood loss. In summary, deciding if the symptoms are acute or chronic help determine the etiologies and how many investigations need to be done. Acute diarrhea has a limited differential and treatment is supportive. For chronic diarrhea, a good history will be a key to the diagnosis. Determining if symptoms resolve with fasting or with a clear liquid diet can help determine if an osmotic cause is probable. A stool workup can help determine what type of chronic diarrhea is present and how to further investigate.